Hi, and welcome to another digital book talk from Massanutten Regional Library. Today we are focusing on verse novels for our middle grade readers. A verse novel is a novel that is written in the form of poems versus the traditional novel that is written in prose. Prose being sentences that develop into paragraphs, developing into pages and chapters. And for some of us, that can be a little overwhelming to see words going from one side of the page to the other. When you look at a verse novel, you're going to see more whiteness. You're going to see extra space around the edges. It can be a little more comforting to people who are um, adverse to, to doing that much reading or who just need to feel the accomplishment of, hey, you know, I can get through this and I have finished this part. So all three of my books today are verse novels. They are written in the form of poetry. We have Closer to Nowhere by Ellen Hopkins, Garvey's Choice by Nikki Grimes, and Before the Ever After by Jacqueline Woodson. In all three of them, we have male characters who have some sort of relationship happening with their father as well, so they have that connection too. So we're going to start here with Closer to Nowhere by Ellen Hopkins. In Closer to Nowhere, we have Kale, who is 12 years old, and his cousin Hannah. Um, Kale has had a lot of adversity already in his 12 years. Um, his mom has died of cancer. His dad is in prison. He's done a number of things. Um, Cal remembers things like being, getting into a car with his mom and being chased by dad who was trying to shoot at them. Um, dad has been a drug user and so he remembers things about, about that part, um, about living with dad and his brother Frank and how when dad went to prison, Frank used him to go out on the streets to ask nice women for money so that Supposedly, he could take care of Cal, but more to take care of his own habit and get his next fix. Um, Hannah has lived all of her life with mom and dad, uh, Taryn and Bruce. Uh, Taryn is, is Cal's mother's identical twin. So when Cal moves in with them, you know, he's got a woman there who looks just like his mom, but isn't. It's his aunt Taryn. And... Um, so Cal moving in with Aunt Taryn and Uncle Bruce and Hannah brings some, some other strife to the family, some difficulties. Cal still has difficulties dealing with some of the things that have happened to him when he was um, living with Dad. And so when he is bullied at school, his, one of his reactions is to basically scream, to just let it out, just scream. Um, and of course that gets him some negative attention at school as well. Um, one of his other ways of dealing with things at times is to just take off. He just disappears for a few hours and nobody knows where he's gone. They just know that he's disappeared. And of course, when he comes back, then the problems ensue with how do we discipline him? Should we discipline him? And that's part of where Aunt Taryn and Uncle Bruce disagree. So Cal's living with Hannah. Hannah's never had to share before. She's never had to share her parents, her house, her school, her classroom, because she's never had a sibling. And now all of a sudden she's got someone who's there 24 seven sharing everything she's ever had. And she doesn't deal well with this either. She finds Cal to be embarrassing, you know, screaming and such. Um, she doesn't care for his pranks. And admittedly when he shrinks her competition leotard and she needs it that morning for a competition. That's a, an issue. Um, so, you know, she's not Cal's biggest fan either. There are times where they get along and once um, Uncle Bruce starts considering moving out, there are, there are definite points where Hannah and Cal really start to come together and Hannah starts to understand more about Cal and they start to um, appreciate each other more. Um, so I admit completely that I cried multiple times during this book. I, I was very surprised when the book first came across my desk because it's labeled as a juvenile fiction and I'm used to all of the Ellen Hopkins books being young adult 
And so I thought, oh, this has got to be wrong, till I researched it and found, no, nope, this is her first book for our middle grade readers. Um, and I think the book takes even more significance when you read the author's note at the end and you find that the character of Kale, his personality anyways, is based on one of Hopkinson's grandsons. Um, the things that she writes about are things that she's experienced secondhand as she's watched the, the trials that her daughter has had and then watched um, how that has affected her grandchildren and, and herself as she's had to take some of her grandchildren in and raise them on her own. Well, not on her own, with her husband as well. But even knowing that, as she says, that she's experienced some of those issues with how do we deal with this and what it does to the husband and wife dynamic as well. Our second book today is Garvey's Choice by Nikki Grimes. So in Garvey's Choice, our main character is Garvey. And um, Garvey's father has always wanted him to be athletic. Garvey is not interested in being athletic. Garvey is interested in astronomy, science fiction, reading, anything besides sports. His sister Angela, she's the athletic one in the family. So she runs some interference for Garvey when it comes to dad. So when dad says things like, hey, let's go shoot some hoops, and Garvey has no interest in doing it. It's Angela who jumps up and says, I want to shoot hoops, you know, let's go do that, dad. Um, Garvey feels like a failure at times, and so he uses food to comfort himself. Um, he's a kind kid, he's funny, he's smart, he's a loyal friend, but he's overweight because he's using the food as a comfort for when he feels like a failure. And because he's overweight, he's teased by bullies and he feels lonely at times. So at some point, Garvey's only friend convinces him to join the school choir. And that's when Garvey's life changes. The choir is, is his new, it's just the best thing for him. He becomes the soloist, so that tells you how good he is that he becomes the soloist for the choir. And he learns how to accept himself. Um, and then he finds that this is also a way to be able to reach his father because his father has some musical things in his past that he's never quite shared with Garvey, but now they also have a connection. And so that is a big turning point for Garvey and his father to have this connection through music. A much lighter uh, book than our first story, um, but a very good read just the same. And, and just what I was saying earlier about the white space, Look at the white space. This is, if you're having a difficult you know, time reading, this is a sense of accomplishment to see how quickly you might be finished with that page. Now, verse means you're going to have to do a little more with the imagination and fill in some of the blanks for yourself, but there's nothing wrong with using what you've got up here to fill in some of that rather than getting it straightforward told to you in a, in a norm, uh, not normal, but in a traditional novel. So this is Garvey's Choice by Nikki Grimes. And our third and final book for today is Before the Ever After by Jacqueline Woodson. So uh, once again, we have a father-son dynamic happening here. Uh, for as long as ZJ can remember, his dad has been everyone's hero. He is a popular pro football star. He is beloved by all of the neighborhood kids and, and loved just as much to them or by them as he is by the millions of sports fans all across the nation. But lately, dad's been forgetting stuff and he's turned moody. The doctors think it might be because he's had so many concussions, but they're not really sure how to help him. And that stings. And so does the, the day his dad embarrasses him in front of his friends. You see, ZJ has had these three best friends forever. And it is, at this particular point, New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve, uh, turning into the year 2000, when everybody thought the whole world was going to stop because the first digit was going to be a two 
instead of a one in the year. And I just want to read from that page as, as ZJ and his friends are having this party at his house, which is really like a sleepover, so they're together in his bedroom. Um, and he says, and maybe we were a little bit excited for some kind of explosion. We were only 10 then, and I guess when you're a little kid like that, some part of you just believes that no matter what happens, you're going to be safe. If the end of time comes, Daniel said, we had us some good years together. I'll always remember y'all. We didn't know what was coming. We didn't even think it was strange that my daddy was in his room with the door closed instead of in his chair in the TV room watching videos of football games. But when he came into our room and started yelling about the loud music, we all froze. Who are these boys anyway? He said, frowning at Ollie, Derry, and Daniel, who he'd known practically forever. At first, we thought he was kidding. And I said, Daddy, stop playing. And then he said, do I look like I'm playing? And left the room, slamming the door so hard the whole room shook. After that, we all just went to bed, didn't stay up to say Happy New Year, didn't try to wait to see if the world was going to end. My daddy had never yelled at us kids. So in some kind of way, the world as we'd always known it had already ended. Um, you see, in the, in the late 90s and the early 2000s, football players were really experiencing these kinds of things. Football players um, began to exhibit symptoms of like headaches and mood swings, confusion and depression, aggression and memory loss, and, and nobody really knew quite what was going on. Uh, and then about 2002, a doctor discovered that the same brain disease that affects boxers was also harming football players. And that's what's happening here. But of course, at the time this is set, they don't understand it either. They don't know what's happening. ZJ doesn't understand what's happening to his dad. His dad doesn't understand what's happening to him. But it totally affects all of the family dynamics. Um, and ZJ is simply comforted by knowing that he's got friends. He questions whether they're going to keep coming after being yelled at by dad. But he knows that he's got friends. He's got people there who have his back, who are there to help cheer him on and help him through some of the scary things. And that's what this book is about, helping each other. Before the Ever After by Jacqueline Woodson. Check them out. They're available through your local branch of the Massanutten Regional Library. And until next month, happy reading.